What is up guys, this is Jay here, jmedia1.com. Today we are talking about what's new in tech. Today's tech news is for November of 2021. This is this month's tech news wrap up. So let's go guys. First off, today we're talking about AT&T and Verizon agreeing to 5G power limits to resolve FAA safety concerns. In top news today, AT&T and Verizon volunteer to take precautionary measures even though they say there's no credible evidence of interference with plane signals. These companies are agreeing to take two new measures to make sure that their cell phone towers mid-band spectrum won't interfere with aircraft signals. The companies had to lay out their plan with a letter to the FCC to diffuse a conflict between the wireless and aviation industries. The company said they plan to lower the power levels nationwide on their cell towers to transmit 5G signals over the so-called C-band of the spectrum. They will impose even stricter power limits on the use of these spectrum near regional airports and public helipads. They will take action for a period of six months while additional evidence from radio altimeter manufacturers is evaluated. <clears throat> Apple is nearing a deal to use its own 5G modems in 2023, iPhones, report says. Apple may be drawing close to having its own 5G modems ready for its 2023 iPhones. This was reported on Wednesday. As the tech giant works out a deal with the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company to use TSMC's chip production technology, the Cupertino, California-based Apple intends to mass-produce its first in-house 5G modem chip and other components, according to Nokia, which cited anonymous sources. The news follows analyst Ming Ching Kuo saying in May that the Apple plan to switch to custom modems for future iPhones, moving away from traditional supplier Qualcomm. For years, rumors have circulated that Apple has been edging closer to seizing control of more parts that make up its devices. In 2019, it paid $1 billion to acquire Intel's modems business after the chipmaker announced its intention to leave the modem market. That came after Apple settled a license dispute with Qualcomm, allowing it to use Qualcomm modems in its wireless devices. Samsung's to build a $17 billion chip factory in Texas. Samsung on Tuesday announced plans to build a $17, $17 billion uh, semiconductor factory in Central Texas, a massive investment that comes amid a global shortage. The facility will be located in Taylor, where Samsung already has a production facility. It's a town some 30 miles from Austin with a population of about 16,000 people. The electronics giant will bring ground, break ground next year and chip production is expected to begin in 2024. Samsung sells more phones and TVs than any other company, but it also has a huge business selling memory chips to device manufacturers around the globe. In recent months, Samsung's chip business has gotten a boost from increased demand for equipment as people work from home during the coronavirus pandemic. And data centers store everything we're doing online. Someone just bought virtual land for $2.5 million. A Canadian investment firm recently purchased a digital plot of land for nearly $2.5 million in cryptocurrency, it said Tuesday. The purchase at the total of $2.43 million is the biggest of its kind on record. Tokens.com, which focuses on decentralized finance, DE-FI, made the buy on Decentraland, a blockchain-based metaverse where cryptocurrency is spent to customize avatars, acquire real estate, and interact with other members. Twitter's dispersing tweet fix expands to iOS. A Twitter update to fix an issue that caused tweets to disappear from view as timelines auto-refresh rolled out on desktops earlier this month and expanded to its iOS app on Tuesday. It's a welcome change for anyone who's ever had a tweet vanish before they could refinish doing it. This follows the company saying it was working on changes to fix the issue in September, acknowledging that it was a frustrating experience. The update will come to Android app in the future, it confirmed in a tweet. The Indian government set to ban cryptocurrencies. India is set to go ahead with its plan to ban most cryptocurrencies in the country under a long-awaited bill. 
Expectations had grown in recent months that the government may soften its view on digital currencies. The ban would create to all private companies cryptocurrencies with certain exceptions to allow the promotion of its underlying technology and its uses. Cryptocurrency prices dropped on, on Indian exchanges after the decision on the bill's future was announced. According to a government bulletin, the ban is part of the proposed cryptocurrency and regulations of official digital currency bill that will be introduced in its winter season. The planned legislation aims to create a facilitative framework for the creation of the official digital currency to be issued by the Reserve Bank of India, RBI. The plan to prohibit all private cryptocurrencies appeared to be essentially the same as the earlier draft of the bill submitted in January. While the description of the bill has remained the same, the exact differences have yet to be confirmed because the latest draft is not yet publicly available. Market impact, the value of several digital currencies, reportedly dropped following the announcement of the bill. Bit Bitcoin fell more than 13% on the Indian exchange site, WayZerX, while Shiba Inu and Dogecoin both dropped more than 15%. However, Glenn Goodman, the author of Crypto Trader, told the BBC World Business Report radio program that the global impact was relatively small. Even when China decided to ban cryptocurrency, and that was a really big deal, it didn't completely massacre the crypto markets, he said. According to a video by local news publication India Today, cryptocurrency trading is likely to continue under the proposed bill as long as users buy from exchanges, which meets certain requirements. The report added that the bill may focus on restricting who is allowed to create cryptocurrencies with the aim of protecting investors. These are some serious concerns according to the Coindesk website. The RBI, the country's central bank, is regarded as having conservative views about cryptocurrency. In March of 2020, India's Supreme Court overturned a digital currency trading ban imposed by RBI for two years. And last week, RBI Governor Shitakana Das said that the bank has serious concerns from the point of view microeconomic and financial stability and that blockchain technologies can thrive without cryptocurrencies. However, Mr. Goodman pointed to the recent ban in China and El, Sal El, El Salvador's plan to build a Bitcoin city at the base of a volcano with the cryptocurrency used to fund the project. Governments take a very different approach to how they see it, he said, as a threat, an opportunity, or somewhere in between. Mr. Goodman said that the Chinese government wants to get rid of all digital currencies except the one that it is creating. They want to dominate cryptocurrencies, and it seems to me like the Indian government has got the same idea. They think, well, if China is doing it, then we can too. Huge fines and a ban on a default password in the new UK law. The government has introduced new legislation to protect smartphone devices in people's home or smart devices, period, in people's homes from being hacked. Recent research from Consumer Watchdog, which suggested homes filled with smart devices could be exposed to more than 12,000 hacks in a single week. Default passwords for internet connected devices, which will be banned, and firms which do not comply with face huge fines. One expert said that it was an important first step. Cyber criminals are increasingly targeting products from homes and smart TVs to home speakers and internet connected dishwashers. Hackers who can access one vulnerable device can then go on to access the entire home network and steal personal data. In 2017, for example, hackers stole from a U.S. casino via an internet-connected fish tank. They have been, there have also been reports of people accessing home webcams and speaking to family members. While there are strict rules about protecting people from physical harm, such as overheating, sharp components, or electrical shocks, there are no such rules for cyber breaches. The Product Security and Telecommunications Infrastructure Bill lays out three new rules. Easy to guess, default passwords preloaded on devices are banned. All products now need unique passwords that cannot be reset to factory default. Customers must be told when they buy a device with the minimum time it will receive vital security updates and patches. If a product doesn't get either, that must be disclosed security researchers will be given a public point of contact to point out flaws and bugs. The new regime will be overseen by a regulator, which will be appointed once the bill comes into force. 
It will have the power to find companies up to 10 million or 4% of their global turnover, as well as $20,000 million, $20, a day for ongoing contraventions. The rules apply not just to the makers of the digital products, but also to the businesses which sell cheap tech products imports in the UK. Including within a scope, there are a range of devices from smartphones, routers, security cameras, game consoles, home speakers, and internet-enabled white goods and toys. But it does not include vehicles, smart meters, and medical devices. Desktops and laptops are also not in its remit. Julia Lopez, Minister for Media, Data, and Digital Infrastructure, said, Everyday hackers attempt to break into people's smart devices. Most of us assume it's if a product is for sale, it's safe and secure, yet many are not, putting too many of us at risk of fraud and theft. Our bill will put a firewall around everyday tech from phones and thermostats, to dishwashers, baby monitors, and doorbells, and see huge fines for those who fall, <clears throat> fall foul of tough new security standards. Ken Monroe from security firm Pentest Partners has highlighted many vulnerabilities in internet-connected devices. He told the BBC that the legislation was a big step in the right direction. However, it's important that government acknowledges that this is just the first step. These laws will make the continual improvement to address more complex security issues in smart devices, he said. And which said it was uh, crucial that the rules applied to online marketplaces where it had frequently found security risk products being sold at state hacking, a separate piece of legislation which got royal assent last week at the Telecommunications Security Act, will give Ofcom new powers to monitor the security of telecom networks. Fines of up to 10% of turnover a day can be issued to those who fail to meet standards. The government described it as a significant step to protect the UK from hostile activity from both state actors or criminals. Over the past two years, the government has attributed a range of cyber attacks to Russia, China, North Korea, and Iran. So that's it for the tech wrap up today, guys. We have Black Friday deals at jmedia1.com. That's J A Y M E D I A O N E.com. Check us out at jmedia1.com. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to mash the like button and subscribe to the channel so you can stay informed when new videos like this release. Like, share, and leave a comment below. And thank you guys for watching. We will see you next time. Later, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.